Okay, so I've divided my space up into a series of reference planes. You can see the dimensions that I've used. But each of those reference planes, the ones I'm highlighting at the moment, are meant to indicate the directions of some of these curved shaped ceiling joists that we're going to create. I've also split up in the other direction as well, um, although that just needs to be every so often, so I've got a bit of a control point to control the, the shape of the curve that I'm going to create. Okay, so you can you can see that my blue grids for both of my um, surfaces I've created don't line up those reference planes. So I'm going to select the, the curved grid down the bottom, and you can see here how you can turn on and off the U and the V grid dimensions. So there's um, that surface down the bottom now, with all of the grids turned off. Now what I can do then is um, with, with no grids on at all, as you can see everything's greyed out, I can go to the int I can go to this intersects button and I can then force the surface to be divided up along these intersects and I'll use these reference planes as intersects. So I'm just control clicking the other directions as well. They don't seem to be highlighted in blue, I'm sure I've picked them. I'll just give that another go, I'll control click and put a crossing window through them. They're definitely selected. Let's try again for good measure. I'm, I'm sure I've selected them. Let's try again single clicking. They're just not wanting to highlight. But anyway, I'm, like I said, I'm sure I've selected them. When you're sure you've selected them, go up to this intersect section here and click finish your intersects. And there they are. They were selected. Everything appears to be divided. We'll just have a look at a 3D view of that and orbit around so we can have a, a better view. And there's my bottom surface there, divided up in both directions. And they're divided up now and have been forced to be divided along the plan projection of those reference planes that we created. So we'll endeavour now to do the same to the other one. I'll go back to the ceiling level. Here's the other surface at the top. Um, we're going to divide that up on the same, so I'm turning off the U and the V grids and we're going into intersects and we're going to select the same reference planes for those intersects. Just control clicking, they don't seem to be highlighting there. I'm sure I've done it though, so we go to the intersects and click finish. And that's divided that top surface up into the same divisions um, using using those intersects and we can have a look at a 3D representation here of, of what we've achieved. So we've got the top flat surface and we've got the bottom wavy surface all divided up on the same intersects and each one of those intersect divisions running in the long direction is going to be the direction of the ceiling joist and I'm going to create these ceiling joists with a flat top but with a wavy shaped bottom. You can imagine these ceiling joists being built out of plywood box beams to the curved shape to achieve the bottom curved shape or something like that. Just a, This is just an exercise to show you how you can use these adaptive components which we're going to use in a second. What I'll need before I use the adaptive components, I'll have to go up to the surface representation. There's a little fly up there. I'll show you with the other one what I've just done also. So I'll select the bottom surface here and that's surface. Now if you go up to surface representation, this little fly out arrow, make sure you're on the surface tab and click nodes and that'll display the nodes at the corners there. I'll just change the scales, it might make the nodes stand out a little bit better. Zoom in on that, the nodes are standing out a little bit better there. You can clearly see the nodes on there, I'll just change it to minus five and it might stand out even better. And we're going to use those nodes to actually control um, the ceiling joists and uh, the shape of the top and the shape of the bottom of the ceiling joists. Okay, so I'll just go down with my sunglasses and reset so we can sort of see the orientation of my building shape, the, the little room and how the directions of these ceiling joists is going to play out in there. Uh, see I'm going to have two different lengths 
of ceiling joists because of the building being that L shape. Um, we've got some ceiling joists across the back that have got one, two, three, four, five nodes along their length, five both top and five at the bottom. Um, and then these other shorter ones down the bottom have got three nodes um, across their length. That way we just controlled that with the control of our um, our reference planes that we created. Now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, it looks like seven. We've got seven joists that we need to have <coughs> the five nodes on. Um, so knowing that, I'll just turn off all these other objects again. Well, I'll use my override for my sunglasses and just Oops, didn't have them selected, so let's just select everything again. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. Couldn't figure out why it's not selecting, but that's because we're in the mass. We'll have to finish the mass so we can go back and um, and select the uh, select the walls. Get out of the mass so that I can select the walls. There they are. Select all of that. And then go to my sunglasses and hide those elements. Okay, so here's our ceiling shape again. Just orbit around to have another look at that again. So I've got up the back there, I've got five, I've got uh, ceiling joists that are going to be made with five nodes, and we've got seven of those. Okay, so we'll just stop the video there.